A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Tuesday, July 9th. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. The city of Middletown Mayor Joe DiStefano and other dignitaries gathered in front of the Kleiner Center at the former Middletown Psychiatric Center on a sweltering Monday afternoon for a signing ceremony to celebrate the official transfer of the long derelict property from the state to the city. With the accelerated expansion of FATN College in progress on the site, the transfer closes a long chapter of abandonment by the state and culminates a venture that city officials began a decade ago. De Stefano says the city's assumption of the property will do much for its future. One of our visions was to become a, um, a younger, to get younger in the city uh, with arts, education, and we were able to do that with the expansion of SUNY Orange with Toro Medical. Toro Medical then offering a master's program and then the presence of FATN coming in here. So um, this colleges bring in people, they bring in money, they bring in private investment, and um, so it means an awful lot to the city. And I think especially to this neighborhood up here, that uh, this is no longer a derelict vacant buildings. In a couple of years, these will be vibrant buildings just like they are across the road here. FATN operates its main campus in nearby Cuddebackville. There appears to be some confusion as to if the city of Newburgh is going to hire a new police commissioner in the wake of Jose Gamera's recent resignation. Mayor Torrance Harvey says the administration has already begun a search for a new commissioner. But Councilman Robert McLemore, a lieutenant in the Wallkill Town Police Department, wants it discussed and proven to be needed. I think it's important that we, we talk about it, we discuss it. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to take away what uh, was established. It's just the fact that uh, I just think that we can better utilize our resources right now so that we can get more people out there or more police officers out there uh, on the street. McLemore also would like to give newly appointed Chief Brandon Rolla an opportunity to implement his own crime-fighting strategies. The moratorium on constructing new warehouses in the town of Wallkill has been extended for another six months. The ban until November makes the total ban a year and a half. Projects that were approved prior to the initial moratorium may go forward. Town Supervisor George Serrano says the board is concerned about the total square footage proposed and the potential long-term effect on the town. When it first came to my knowledge that there was over 9 million square feet being proposed in the town of Wallkill, that we needed to look at this. And the board agreed. That's why they uh, agreed to the moratorium. You know, that was a concern. Are we going to become the town of warehouses that are empty? As for the Orange County Fairgrounds, which the owner would like to sell to a warehouse developer, Serrano says that property is not zoned for warehouse and distribution facilities. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. If all goes according to plans, construction of the new Ulster County Government Operations Center in New Pulse could start in early 2025 with completion in 2027. The County Legislature's Oversight Committee was updated on the project on Monday with County Emergency Services Commissioner Everett Erickson saying the new facility would include the primary 911 dispatch center as well as the county's emergency operations center. A lot of this information sharing when it comes to emergency coordination, the EOC, those individuals in there need to know what's going on. They need to know what units are responding. They need to know what information is being gathered so they can plan appropriately. The new facility would also house the Information Technology Center for the county. Sullivan County BOCES Food Service Director Dawn Parsons 
says that it's important to make sure that children are eating, especially during the summer months when schools are closed. The BOCI Summer Food Service Program started on Monday, and it's hoped that it will close the food insecurity gap among people under 18 years of age, says Parsons. If we don't have programs over the summer, we are always, as community members, staff members, lunch ladies, mealmen, districts, we always worry about those kids not getting meals. Parsons says they're trying to get sites up, such as the one at SUNY Sullivan, and in centralized locations so that kids who need the meals will have access to multiple locations. Ulster County government has begun its solar and vehicle infrastructure program, which will commit $2.5 million of the county's American Rescue Plan Act funds to support clean energy investments by local governments. The goal is to reduce reliance on fossil fuels and help mitigate climate change. The program will award up to $100,000 to municipalities for solar, EV charging infrastructure, or both, and require a 50% local match. County Executive Jen Metzger says there has never been a more opportune time for local governments to make clean energy investments. State police have released the identity of a man who drowned in the Upper Delaware River on Sunday as a 37-year-old Ben Salem, Pennsylvania man. The death of Cherog Patel early in the afternoon follows the June 29th drowning of 24-year-old Jason Ariel Osorio Reyes of Ocean County, New Jersey, near Milford Beach, Pennsylvania. According to New York State Police, at about 12.40 p.m. on Sunday, troopers from the Liberty Barracks responded to the area of 2362 State Route 97 in Pond Eddy for a report of a drowning in the Delaware River. A preliminary investigation revealed that Patel was swimming in the river during a rafting trip when he submerged and did not return to the surface. Port Jervis Fire Department located Patel in the water, where he was removed and declared dead at the scene. A 23-year-old motorcycle operator was killed on Sunday afternoon when his 2004 Honda motorcycle failed to negotiate a curve on northbound Route 9 W in the town of Highlands, ran off the road, and slammed into a parked and occupied 2023 GMC Acadia in a scenic pull-off. The motorcycle operator, identified as Christopher Bernal, was transported to Montefiore St. Louis Cornwall Hospital in Newburgh by town of Highland CMS, where he died from his injuries. The front seat passenger of the GMC was also transported to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The investigation into the crash is ongoing. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.